bring in our 1320 Kings insider uh, and creator of the Kings beat, James Ham. James, the Kings just told us that De'Aaron Fox and Terrence Davis are out tonight. Uh, that was directly from the Kings. It's not from the injury report. So we, I, I, the best of my knowledge, we don't have an update on Donovan Mitchell yet. So uh, what's that look like for the Kings tonight with both of those guys out? Yeah, I'm going to guess that Davion Mitchell gets a start um, and that they're going to keep Malik Monk in the same position that he's been so successful in lately uh, coming off the bench. Um, it's not a good thing for Sacramento. This is a guy that has been so incredibly good all season, and you got to worry that this thing is lingering a bit. It's been you know two or three weeks that he hasn't looked sort of like himself, and uh, you need him 100% and ready to roll. And I told you guys a couple of, like, it was probably two weeks ago now, like, he came limping into the locker room. He was hurting, and there is no question that the, he has been playing through an injury. Uh, we just don't know specific. Oh, damn. that is this, an official freeze. A big time free. That is an official freeze uh, <laughs> at three oh three. Screenshot it, y'all. Three three oh three Pacific Standard Time. Uh, James Ham has frozen. Uh, James Ham has frozen. Uh, this is this is a tough freeze. Uh, bad things happening there uh, out in Auburn. This is a tough one. We've got to let that. We've got to let that screen live up there. I don't That's, know why. Those are the rules. I don't know why this is so funny to me. I don't. I don't know either. I feel like James hasn't frozen in a while. Yeah, I think. I think James placing bets. And yeah, like the the wagers have stopped being laid, and and it's just uh, he, here we are. You know, at the holidays with a. It is cold outside, uh, but we've got a, 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 a cloudy 53 degrees, uh, but a frozen James Ham here on the screen. And he was leading into uh, De'Aaron's injury and what he's been dealing with uh, with his foot. Which, again, I think he spoke about for the first time on record uh, with Jason Anderson in the Sacramento Bee. So yeah. it's and, 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 and I think for those who have been at games, because for me, it was far more noticeable in the arena than at any time prior uh on television as we welcome back uh frozen james ham james you had just you had just mentioned um De'Aaron fox like limping into the locker room and i i i had said it it was far more noticeable for me that something was wrong with De'Aaron fox when i watched him in person because it felt like and i think we've talked about this before it felt like every dead ball he was he was just trying to get from point a to point b without hurting himself. But when the whistle blew, he was ready to go. He's clearly been in some discomfort with that foot for a while. Yeah, it's been a long time. And, you know, it's, it's tough when you're trying to play through it at the NBA level. And we're talking about a load-bearing, you know, situation here. This is, he needs his feet to, to do everything. Uh, he's so quick, um, you know, and I hope that he's able to heal up quick. We, we don't know how long it's going to be at all. It could just be one game. Um, he thought he would he would try to play through it. He's been playing through it, but I think sometimes this catches up to you, especially when you hit the road. And we've talked about this too, where you, everybody's body's different. What happens on an airplane and altitude and everything else, you just don't know what your foot's going to look like when you get to the next city. And uh, so hopefully he he speeds through this, and and you know he's a guy who typically heals very quickly. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where you know we're all hoping it's just, you know, some type of soreness. I know they mentioned bruise and things of that nature where, you know, maybe the rest does, you know, does it some good to have him, you know, get an extra day or two of rest. The concern is if it's not, if it's something structural and, you know, it's something that's lingering because Damien, I mean, we talked a bit about this yesterday. If it's a serious foot injury, I'm not sure what one extra day yeah. is going to do, you know? So, Hopefully, hopefully it's something that's just like, you know, an extra day of rest will do wonders for for, for that foot. Yeah, I'm going to guess it's going to be more than a day. Um, you know, we don't know for sure, but like this is a situation where, you know, when he's not 100%, he's still good and he still draws all the coverage. That's what you have to remember that like mm -hmm. things change very quickly when you don't have one guy drawing the toughest defender every single night. And so that means that guys like Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, and Davion Mitchell are going to have to deal with somebody who's better 
at on the defensive end and the guy that was going to be there if if Fox was there. And so there's a trickle down effect here that you're going to have to deal with if you're the Kings. And uh, hopefully Davion comes out and plays like he did in the game where Fox went out and and missed the uh, well, not the game that he missed, the game that he went out during the game, and then Davion was incredible. The next game when Davion got his first start, he wasn't he was just kind of meh, you know, didn't really figure out where to fit in, yeah. and uh, I think he was overthinking it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we don't know the status of Donovan uh, Mitchell yet, but I wonder if the fact that Kevin loves out and Donovan is, if he plays tonight or not, he's certainly not going to be a hundred percent. Uh, he was last listed as questionable on the injury report that came out at the bottom of the hour. Uh, I wonder if that played any factor, uh, into, to, to De'Aaron out, or if this really was a situation where De'Aaron just couldn't go. Yeah. I'm going to guess that the Kings aren't worried about Donovan or not. That, that they're worried about their guy and, you know, sort of the long-term ramifications of this if he can't shake it off and keep going. Um, like, these, are, these aren't things that, you're, that you want to see happen to your, uh, your star player. You know, any— No, I understand, but it feels— yeah. But he's, this is like he's, he's played it. I mean, he said—I I think, I think he told the B or the Orlando game, it's clearly been bothering him for at least the last seven— I wonder what the t- I wonder if the tipping point was De'Aaron or his pl- like hey I, I I can't do it this time or if it was hey what I want I, I guess what I'm saying is whose decision was right, it right yeah well I, I'll tell you Orlando is all that's game eight of the season so that's like 14 games ago mm-hmm. um, that's a long time ago if that's when he heard it I, I didn't notice it until the Hawks game that's when the first time. Yeah, I, I saw him where I thought he was walking really straight legged. He had a uh, like a a wrap on one of his legs. I thought he just looked like he was beat up. Um, but then when we got him back in Sacramento, I watched him come in late after a game and was like, "Oh boy!" Like you could see him limping around. And like, look, these guys, like they are like typically it's the big guys, but um, NBA players are known to have bad feet. Like even just walking around on a daily basis, just because they're they're not missing games, like these guys, their feet have taken a beating throughout their lives, mm-hmm. and you know it's it's one of those things. A lot of guys, um, you know, we talk about movie references. It's, it's like Boomerang. You know, Eddie Murphy like didn't like the, the bad feet on the ladies. Boy, uh, look look at that! <laughs> Come <laughs> on, James. Phenomenal Ham. knowledge. Come on, James. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. You like that. That is like well that? done, my friend. You like that? That is so, well done, my friend. Poor Lilo Hammer time. Uh, hammer time in the shoes. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's uh, some of these guys, um, it, they're, it, it comes down to like economics at some point. Like their parents didn't have the ability to A, pay for shoes or skipping two and three sizes at a time, and B, like, like, finding shoes in a size 15, finding shoes a size 17, you know, I worked sporting goods for a long time. You only get in a handful of size 17s and they aren't the good shoes, you know, and, and they're the bottom of the barrel. And so like when you got like Jason Thompson, I think wore a size 22 and his toes looked like he was jammed in shoes that were at least three sizes too small for years because all of his toes were curled up like these guys really they they take a beating and like Fox isn't in that category but the way he uses his body flies all over the place you know it's such a quick twitch athlete um you know it's tough like it, he his feet take a beating yeah, I mean it's just the uh the life of a of a basketball player and I didn't make it to the NBA but today I don't I don't have good feet you know what I mean like I don't walk around barefoot I need some kind of cushion on my feet at all times, just because it's just it's hard. And I didn't play in the NBA, right? And I didn't play, you know, all these games. So, you know, you that's played always... a lot of basketball and a lot of courts with yeah, a lot of shoes on. Exactly. So that's, you know, that's just the, the, the nature of it all. The thing with De'Aaron Fox that, you know, like I said, I worry about is that is it pain tolerance or soreness? Or is do you have any idea if he's like, getting information from the training staff or possibly needs to see a doctor to see if this is something that could be more than just soreness. 
Oh, they they've been on this for weeks. I guarantee it. They he's got the training staff has been all over it. I mean, for that matter, I'll tell you, like when I was leaving the locker room um two games ago, uh I watched one of the the trainers pulling uh, Terrence Davis a uh, Terrence Davis aside and like literally having a heart to heart about his back. And I didn't know it at the time what the issue was because it hadn't been on the injury report. Um, but then right after that, he was uh, determined out for that game. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things where I, I literally heard them like, we can't tell you what's in your heart. You got to tell us what's happening with your body. One of those moments. And uh, especially with, you know, like soft tissue issues with a, with a lower back. Um, like I don't, there's nothing structurally wrong with Terrence Davis's back, uh, but he's got something going on. And so again, he's out again, and that would actually help the Kings to have a guy like that, especially if you're going to have to use Monk in a different way and more Monk, uh, as opposed to, you know, the 22 and a half, 23 minutes a game he's averaging right now. Is it back stuff? Just almost impossible to play through like that. That that's just oh, yeah. comfortable. That stuff is difficult to even move with. Um, I can attest to that. Yes, yeah, it, yes, sure. you can. Yeah. As as James hurts his back. Hey, James, you think you could sit through twelve hours of radio for the next three <laughs> days while Kenny's uh taking care of the baby? Um, well, looking at this game, otherwise, James, obviously, this was a the the, the first time these t- two teams met. Was uh, it was it was a big turning point for the Kings. It was a a, a, a huge win for them. Are, are, are arguably the biggest of the season. Certainly one of them. Uh, but when you look at the numbers, man, there are some numbers that did not go their way, particularly the rebounding numbers. Mm. Uh, they were out-rebounded by somewhere around a million. Uh, the <laughs> offensive rebounding was like 12 to 2. Coming off the heels of what we saw against the Bucks, where they were out-rebounded both overall and just destroyed on the offensive boards as well, and how frustrated Mike Brown appeared uh, following that game with the way that his team played – how different do you think tonight's game is versus the one we saw earlier this season with the obvious absence of De'Aaron and Terrence? Her, yeah. uh, actually, Terrence didn't play in the first game, so yeah. it was just De'Aaron. Yeah, it's really tough because it's not just their bigs. So they have these crazy, long, rangy bigs in Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. Um, but then, you know, in, in the game against the Kings, the last time, Karis LeVert had 10 rebounds. And Kevin Love came off the bench and had eight rebounds. This is a, a team that can actually go out and hit you with a big-time rebound number. Um, the Kings this season have been exceptional on the defensive glass. Uh, they were number one coming into the Bucks t- uh, the Bucks game. I think they've dropped to number two at this point. But, you know, you're still on occasion going to give up a few offensive rebounds. Uh, it's the teams that aren't great three-point shooting teams mm-hmm. that you always have to look out for with the offensive rebounds because good shooting teams – they don't have those crazy long rebounds all the time. And that's what the Bucks, the Bucks game, you know, a bunch of long rebounds. Uh, and, and I think it's the same thing you're going to run into with Cleveland. Like they have a tendency to have a bunch of long rebounds just because they aren't knocked down three point shooters all over the court. Um, yeah, it should be a lively game. You got to keep a body on somebody. Um, I don't think even in that first game, um, I'd have to look it up, but how much did Chemezi Metu play in that game? Uh, he played, you know, almost 13 minutes um, and only had one rebound. Like, Chemezi Metu is a different player today than he was then. Mm-hmm. And DeMontis Sabonis only had five rebounds in that game. That's I ex- crazy. Yeah, I expect this team to, the Kings, to, to play better uh, around the, you know, around the basket. And, you know, what we're seeing with Sabonis and his ability to bully people and push people around, especially these thin guys. Um, he's really kind of hitting his stride. And uh, I, I think this will be a highly competitive game again. Whether the Kings can pull it out, I, I have no idea. But, um, you know, this is this road trip was always going to be extremely difficult. Adding in a De'Aaron Fox foot issue is just going to make it that much uh, more, you know, difficult to get through. That first game um, with Metsu, that was the, the real-time transformation of the Met two we know today, because if you guys remember, I know James will probably remember this. That was the game where Met two was wide open at the top of the key and was so unsure what to do because he was trying to do what Mike Brown has always told him to do, that he traveled. 
<laughs> <laughs> Remember that he was wide open. And last year's Metsu would have pulled that with no hesitation. But he caught the ball and he just kind of, uh, I'm not really supposed to take this shot. And just walked with the ball. <laughs> so just yeah. John Moran with the ball all <laughs> over the board. Right. John Moran with the ball. So yeah, um, it is a different Metsu at this point in time. Um these you, teams are different. They are different. They are different. Than when, when the first time they played. You talked about um talked about kind of what I talked about the other day, James, in that Bucks game with the long rebounds and things of that nature. And I, I know, you know, the 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 size of the Cavs with Jared Allen and Evan Mobley and those guys is an issue. But just like with the Bucks with Brooke Lopez and Giannis and Bobby Portis, I didn't necessarily think the size hurt them that much on the boards as it was the guards forgot to get in there and get dirty and rebound those long those long boards. And I hope that, and I'm pretty sure, Mike Brown was all over that in the film study. And if they're going to see more of that again today, um, I think those guards will be ready to, you know, get ready. Don't leak out too early or don't just get stand, stand there watching. Get ready to get those long rebounds and those tap outs. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the – I know it sounds really strange, but it's one of the really big areas that you're going to miss De'Aaron Fox. You know, he's averaging five rebounds a game this season. And for the things that Davion Mitchell does do well, he is not a good rebounder. Um, he's not a guy that, that's going to go in and mix it up. Um, you know, Fox is – right now his rebound his, – his defensive rebound percentage is at 15.7, which is like – basically 5% higher than any time in, in his career. He mm. really is uh, taking it upon himself to, to be a better rebounder. Um, and if you're losing him as, you know, a guy who's coming back and getting boards, somebody else has to step up. And whether that's Kevin Herter, who, again, isn't a great rebounder. Uh, you know, Malik Monk is a guy that, that does actually do pretty well. But, you know, we're talking about Davion Mitchell averaging 2.3 rebounds per game and Herter averaging 3.2. You just need to be better from everyone, uh, but probably more specifically from Harrison Barnes, from Chemezi Metu, and uh, from Keegan Murray. Like These guys need to get in there and help Sabonis out, especially against a super, super long and athletic team. Harrison Barnes, very good the first time these two teams yeah. played, by the way. Yeah. Led the team in rebounding. Unfortunately, he led the team with nine mm, that was the uh the team leader <laughs> the team leader in more. rebounds he had 20 and nine uh in that one you mentioned keegan murray I feel like keegan's gotten a little bit more comfortable you know you talked about this before the bucks game that he's gonna have to you know he's done really well at home and you're starting to see signs of maybe him getting back to that form that we saw uh, at the beginning of the season and even though you know i i, I thought the kings overall played pretty well uh, in that Bucks game, but I thought Keegan did play well, and I feel like we're starting to see uh, Keegan Murray kind of, kind of go, go back to what we saw at the beginning of the year, get more comfortable even on the road. Yeah, I mean he is starting to find his game again. Um, and look, he's a rookie. Like if you shake a rookie's confidence, it sometimes takes two weeks to get through it. You know, and I think he's playing a lot better. He's had you know personal stuff going on off the court. Um, but you know, the, the three point shot is coming around, whether it's going in every time or not, it, it, it at least looks better. And, mm -hmm. and we're seeing the defensive improvements too. That's where I think in this game, if he can find a way to slow down Karis Levert, um, and if he gets switched onto Mobley, that's going to be trouble. But we're, we've kind of seen that the Kings last time these two teams played that Harrison Barnes took on Mobley. Um, it, it's just a tough guard. Like for for all the teams in the league, but the Kings just don't have that guy. I almost wonder um, if the Kings will start to look at uh, you know like Casey Akpala again in this game to go up against the length of of Mobley uh, because he has shown that he can be physical with with slider players like this, but um, he's just so rangy. Mobley is just so rangy and and so long. Um, he's, he's dead. He's one of my favorite players, like in the last couple of drafts, I just think his potential is unlimited and he's going to be really good. Like two, three years down the road where you're just like, holy cow, um, you know, probably a top 15 player in the league. Yeah. Do you, do you look at, um, cause one of the things that I was kind of looking at, and I want to see what you think about this is even with the Aaron Fox and Terrence Davis out, if you look at 
the roster for the Cavs, especially with them having Kevin Love out and potentially Donovan Mitchell out. I think it's a situation where the Kings are a little deeper team than the the Cleveland Cavaliers are. Now, we want to say top end talent and all this other stuff. That's one thing. But with Love and with Donovan Mitchell, they that bench wasn't very productive the first time they played. So they're already out Love. Then if they're down Donovan Mitchell, I think that may you know kind of even the playing field, the fact that the Kings have more people to go to in their rotation than maybe Cleveland normally does. Yeah, you know what? The other guy who's missing is Dean Wade, and that doesn't seem like it would be such a D huge Wade, thing. baby. You can't yeah. just me when you miss D Wade. That's right. <laughs> uh, but I mean, this is a guy who averages 24 minutes a game, and he's shooting 41.1 percent from the field. So if you if you pull all of their three point shooters, they're missing. If Mitchell doesn't play, he leads a team at 42.4 percent. And then we look at uh, Darius Garland at 39.7. But then you start getting into like D Wade at 41.1 and Kevin Love right there with at 38.6. Um, it's put the potential for them to be missing three of their top four three point shooters is there. And this already is a team that, you know, do you fear from, um, you know, they're, they're number eight in the league in, in three point uh, percentage at 37.4. But they're 21st in attempts, so it's not really their game. And so if the Kings can figure out a way to uh, to kind of collapse the lane, tighten things up, especially if they're missing multiple shooters, uh, that's how the Kings could make up for lacking uh, De'Aaron Fox on their end. Last, oh, sorry, I was just going to say last game against the Lakers uh, with no D. Wade. Um, they got 7, 10, 11, 17, 19 points off the bench. Um, the Cavs did, and that was with 43 from Donovan Mitchell. So, is that no, that's no Kevin Love, too? I assume that's with Kevin. Oh, that's Love. with Kevin, Kevin Love, Love had two, so take oh. his two away. 15 points off the bench. Oh man, well, yeah. taking Kevin. So, Love's I, two I think away. that they crazy. They, the Kings might that that might be a little bit of an advantage for them that they have a number of guys that they're used to playing and used to asking to do some productive things as opposed to the Cavs bench a little bit. Yeah, that and you know again run a zone for stretches like just clog everything up for them. They don't have a, a motion offense like the Kings do, and like their one major offensive weapon coming into this game if Mitchell doesn't play. Uh, you might be able to neutralize in Darius Garland. You might be able to have Davion Mitchell really focus on him mm. and take a lot of his game away. And then it becomes, you know, how much can you slow down Karis LeVert? How much can you slow down their two bigs? Um, again, I, I thought last time these two teams played, uh, Sabonis just buried Jared Allen in the post. And that's something that I think he'll do again. And, like, it doesn't matter how many of these – tall, long, skinny guys that you throw at him, he seems to be able to, you know, beat those guys up and, and find success. What did you just ask me that everybody I say, heard? We, I was saying, do we have two seconds? Yeah. Danny Cunningham covers the Cavs. Okay. Uh, just tweeted out, Donovan Mitchell just emerged from the tunnel on street clothes 80 minutes before tip-off. That's pretty strong sign he's out tonight. Okay. So still nothing official. But everybody that's there he's late. is not <laughs> is not thinking that he's going to play tonight. Okay, pulling a Willie Cauley Stein there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shane. Sorry, sorry, Willie. Shane. And I got to be honest. I got to be honest. Willie shows up forty five minutes before the game. In straight clothes. <laughs> I, I got to be honest. At I mean, six fifteen, we're leaving the locker room. Willie strolling in, still wearing denim. Uh, and then next thing you know, he's out on the court working out. But uh, good, good, good old Willie. Uh, okay. Uh, the injury report's going to drop in, in four minutes. Yeah, but they it, play in like seven minutes. They, why yeah, they, why they don't do. we know? <laughs> they do play. Well, well there, there is. This was what we were talking about with De'Aaron. There's the literal game time decisions. The Kings were like, well, this isn't a game time decision. The air box is out. Patient. Yes. Y- y- y'all talk about my level of patience. This dude right here, especially when it comes to sports, not the most patient individual. Uh, you mentioned DeMontis Sabonis, uh, James. I want to talk about him and and how this offense might change uh, with De'Aaron Fox out, uh, but DeMontis Sabonis is still available. So we'll talk about that. But first, uh, <laughs> I love that, Kenny. <laughs> hey, we got 
that two seconds. <laughs> like everybody heard that. Like, what do you Four mean? minutes later. <laughs> everybody heard that. Um, we've got tickets right now to give away uh, to see uh, the Sacramento Kings take on Washington on December 23rd. Uh, those tickets are available right now. Caller number three, 916 916- 909-1320. Again, 916-909-1320. Call the number three. We will get you all set up uh, to see the Kings take on Washington on Christmas Eve Eve mm. uh, at the Golden One Center. We'll come back. We'll talk more Kings basketball with James Ham when we return here. He's officially been ruled out. And yeah. there you have it. Uh, <laughs> Donovan, Donovan Mitchell is out. Uh, we'll talk more about this Kings-Cavs game uh, when we return here on ESPN 1320. Officially out. Yeah, I guess people can use me for that. Hmm. That's big. But what about the kid who bought a seat to see? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's only fair. Did you guys see that? Um that thing I tweeted out with the uh, I'm trying to be nice, uh, the oversized basketball college basketball player. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and his fans are falling down, and then got up and hit a perfect backdoor pass for a dunk. <laughs> that was so wonderful that was awesome <laughs> so good <laughs> so good Sabonis would have slipped and fell on that spot four times <laughs> what? slip who, and fall who, right there who was it who was it who was the who was he playing that day I Who can't was the, remember. There was one, one play, play he, he fell he, three he, times. He's shoving him down. <laughs> yeah. It was a it, big name player. Who was it? Yeah, was it uh was it Steven Adams? No. no uh, maybe Steven Adams. Who was it? Um, hold on. That's uh, good. You know, too. Let's see. Golden State, Lakers, Warriors, Nets, Spurs, Pistons. Uh I don't remember. That's bothering the hell out of me. Who was it? Why does he keep shoving him down like that? <laughs> yeah. Why am I? Man. This is going to bother me. Was it? It's one of the first. Yeah, Clippers? It, Blazers? No. No. Memphis? I got this. No. Well, that's Steven Adams. I don't think it was Steven Adams. It had to have been Miami, Memphis, or, well, I guess it could have been the Clippers. Was it was it Nurkic? No, because that's get opening night. Yeah, that was opening night, and it wasn't opening night. Shoot. And it wasn't Plumley, right? No. God damn it! I remember that. Like, why does he keep shoving him down? <laughs> and it ends up that like he just a foul. he He's... just kept hitting a wet spot on the floor, and like he's just. Throwing DeMontis Sabonis to the ground over and over and over again. Yeah. Man, why are we not coming up? I'm looking at their schedule and I don't. don't... Nurk. Maybe it was Nurk. I don't think it was opening night, though. That's the only that's the only reason I don't think it was Nurk is because I don't think it was opening night. Yeah. I mean it was at home. It was definitely at home. (laughs) Maybe it was Steven Adams. Because that's on brand. Steven <laughs> Adams just keeps shoving it into the ground over and over and over again. Yeah. Oh, man, I that's going to. Steven Adams. Uh, that's what I I'm going with. Be. And it wasn't Pirtle. No. Right? No, I don't think so. I think it was Steven. I don't know how you. Devonta Sabonis slipping on the floor. Like, that's <laughs> not going to get me. Yeah, that was now. like me looking for that line in a movie <laughs> on YouTube. It wasn't successful. I gathered that. Just struggling. <laughs> Struggling. Maybe it was Adam. Yeah. Okay. So now, yeah. now, maybe, maybe it was Adams. I think it was Adams. Steven Adams just manhandling Devonta Sabonis at half court. Man, Sabonis has been hitting the head so many oh. times this year. In concussion protocol. He's lost a contact at least three games that I can remember. Uh, 
That's got to be tough playing basketball in contact lenses. Yeah. Oh, poor guy. It, it seems tough to even have contact lenses. Period. Yeah. yeah. I don't like anything near my eyes at all. I, I actually, I, I have a fear of umbrellas. I, I don't want anything, you know, like I, Snow. I, I was always little growing up. I was always like super small. And I remember like going to, you know, back in the 70s and early 80s, like everyone smoked and they'd always just keep their cigarette down by their side. So anytime we went to like parades and stuff or the fair, I was always like super cognizant of like these people with their cigarettes all around my face because I was like that small running around. Yeah. I don't like anything near my eyes. I'm guessing you're you're not pro LASIK surgery where they stick a laser in your eye. Oh goodness, dude! My wife did it, and it, she said it's the greatest thing ever. Like, she, you know, because when you wear contacts, it starves your eyeballs for oxygen. Like your your eyes can't Hang breathe. On, All right. Hang on, James. The end of the commercial break just interrupted James's fear of uh, anything near his eyes, including umbrellas. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like umbrellas at all. No, they have those little points sticking out everywhere. So if the person next to you has an umbrella, it's like right there. You're like. Dangerous. Yeah. Scary times, <laughs> man. Scary times. Our 1320 Kings Insider, James Ham here with us. Uh, we learned just before. The commercial break, Kenny Caraway, our Cleveland insider and um, creator the of streets. the Cavs beat, uh, has determined that uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, gun to beat. <laughs> yeah, uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, is out for tonight's game, so the Cavs will be without Donovan Mitchell and Kevin Love, along with D Wade, uh, and the Sacramento Kings will be without De'Aaron Fox and Terrence Davis as well. Mm -hmm. De'Aaron Fox dealing with uh, an issue in his foot. Uh, Terrence Davis dealing with uh, back soreness. Um, but that's that's big, and this goes into what I was saying. It doesn't mean they're going – I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, obviously. Um, you probably still favor the Cavs. But I think the Kings are a deeper team than, than the Cavs, and the Cavs not having two of their main guys in the rotation. Well, it's because you hate Evan Mobley. I think that's part of your feelings on this. Well, he's great, but he ain't playing 48. No. <laughs> he's going to have to come out at some point. I think the passive way you just said he's great is the nicest thing you've ever said anything or ever said about him. Evan Mobley, really good. He's really, really That's, good. That actually sounded like you meant it that time. He is really good. Okay. But they only got like five players now yeah, that they even that's like. True. <laughs> that, that they like, yeah. <laughs> that they like. Yeah. I love Isaac Okoro. I, you know, that's a guy that I wish the Kings would, would mm -hmm. chase um, just because they, they're hardly using him at all. And, you know, he's he's a little rough around the edges, but talk about like a – like a NBA body and like a huge leaper. Um, mm. Yeah. They're going to be way shorthanded. I don't even know who they're. Oh, they they've got Robin Lopez, so they can go full Lopez on us. Uh, and we'll, well see how that goes. For the bucks. Uh, he's just not as good. Um, <laughs> how much the three with, wait, that's, that's facts. You mentioned uh, you believe Davion Mitchell will start in place of, of, of De'Aaron Fox. And Malik Monk will stay in, in 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 that role. I imagine we see a lot of Malik Monk minutes tonight. But do you think? And and I I feel like this is true most nights, even when De'Aaron is around. Does Sabonis take a bigger role as the playmaker? Does Sabonis take a bigger role as like the the, the center of the Kings universe tonight without De'Aaron out there, or can Davion just seamlessly step into that? Yeah, I mean, you would hope so, but I also know that Davion is still learning how to play off of Sabonis. You know, they sure. they still have to build chemistry. They have not spent a lot of time on the court together. Um, and look, I think the other thing is we're going to see Matthew Delvadova in this game. Like, we'll probably see yeah. quite a bit of Delvadova, and this is, you know, a homecoming of sorts for Delhi. Uh, so he would like to play well here against a, a team that he played for for most of his career. Um, but you know, that's a guy we, we thought it was just a strange thing when they kept him at the end of camp. Um, but how many times has he come in and played already and, you know, actually given you minutes when, when you needed somebody to step in. So yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting, especially Del Vidova is like a true setup man. 
and he can really help that second unit get 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 going. And so I I think it's good. I, they're going to be all right. Uh, I, you know, losing Fox is one thing, but Kings are a deep team. They they don't want to lose him for any length of time. But especially against mm-hmm. another team that's missing players, you should be okay. To your uh, point, James, it seems like I'm just I just watch the games, and it seems like Sabonis is the one that Sabonis and Mitchell are the two interactions where Sabonis is constantly like, no, you were supposed to be there and I needed you to cut here, all this other stuff. Like they they haven't always figured it out on the court uh, as of yet. And, you know, we'll, we'll see if, you know, a game like tonight where there's extended minutes with those two on the court, if they can get some symmetry. Yeah, I haven't seen like the Kings, uh, like their five-man lineups and stuff to see how many minutes that those two guys have played together. But just like it doesn't look like their chemistry chemistry has been great and you know for the for the for the most part like that's where Davion has really struggled is learning to play off the ball and it's not just learning to play off the ball it's learning to play off the ball with a big that changes everything and so we talked about how uh you know when when Halliburton and Fox were in the backcourt that's one way where you have two primary ball handlers. But when you have a ball handling big, it's all about off-ball movement, right? And and if you're not moving constantly, uh, that's where Davion has had issues. It's that he, he has a tendency, we talked about this, the waiting for the bus mentality, where he kind of clicks off for a sec and forgets that he has to keep moving and moving and moving. And uh, it's going to be on him to be better. Uh, and I think he is getting better at this aspect of the game. And it's almost because he's forced to because he's not the primary ball handler anymore in the second unit. That's clearly Malik Monk. Um, but even still, I'll go back to what I was just saying. Just because you play with another off-ball guy, uh, you play with another like major, major minute guy who has the ball in his hands all the time like Monk, that's totally different than playing with a guy like Sabonis. You have to, you have to be just locked in 100% the entire game. And so hopefully he does figure that out. Uh, talking about playmaking and playmakers, uh, we haven't talked, the, the three of us together haven't talked much about the Milwaukee Bucks game. Uh, that was a 17 assist game, the lowest of the season, comfortably uh, the lowest of the season. I think everyone, most importantly, Mike Brown believes that's not Kings basketball. Yeah. That's not the way Mike Brown wants them to play. He used a lot of terms. He used terms like they didn't feel us uh, in, in, in this game. They didn't do anything the way that they wanted to do. Uh, what what stood out to you? Obviously, the Bucks are their mo is on the defensive end, and Giannis <laughs> like like. But they're 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 a tremendous defensive team. W- what did you see in that in that Bucks game that obviously needs to be corrected uh, in just about an hour when that ball goes in the air in Cleveland? Yeah, I mean, I think the Kings settled. You know, I think Fox settled. Uh, I thought he was trying to get himself into the game, and that didn't work. I thought that Malik Monk settled. Um, you know, he was really, really good in the first half and then totally vanished in the second half, missed a bunch of shots in the second half. Mm-hmm. And if you take those two guys and you lose that production and that playmaking, you're going to be in a ton of trouble. And that's, you know, those are their two primary ball handlers this year outside of Sabonis. And uh, they're the guys who initiate everything. They're the guys who get in the paint and draw and kick. And when they're not drawing and kicking, and you're going to run into problems. And I think, if anything, you know, you can't let a team like that dictate who and what you are the entire time. And that's what I felt. Like, that's one of the few times this year where the Kings just really, like, they they were told what they were going to shoot and what they weren't mm-hmm. uh, by an opposing team. And you can't have a bunch of that. Uh, you know, again, the Kings bench, you talked about, how the Cavs benched and hasn't played well in the last couple of games. I mean, the Kings bench was horrible in that game. Outside of Monk, you know, they only had 11 points. And, uh, you know, a bunch of, you know, over threes and two for fives and, you know, just not enough production at all out of the bench. Um, so, yeah, I think it really does come down to, like, the primary ball initiators, your your Fox and your, uh, and your Monk. Um, like they've got to be good every night. And if one of them has an off night, that's okay because the other one seems to have picked the other one up. But when both of them can, when they combine for three assists, you're pretty much toast. I heard a lot of people talking about, um, this uh, social media, maybe even in the chat, but they're like, Hey, 
you know, this could be an opportunity. This should be an opportunity. This needs to be an opportunity to have a big Kevin Herter game, right? Like, uh, do you do you look at it that way? Like, this is an opportunity for Kevin Herter to maybe get that 24-25 that we know he's capable of and, and want to see him hit every now and then? Yeah, it's really strange. They they kind of uh, went away from Kevin Herter over the last, like, two weeks. And I know he struggled with a shot, but at the same time, I don't think he's been getting the same opportunities that he was before. And it's almost like enforcing Harrison Barnes to get going, enforcing Keegan Murray to get going, um, that Keegan kind of took a back seat. And, and again, if you don't have Fox breaking down the defense and getting to the paint uh, on a regular clip, and he has not been doing that for like the last seven games, um, then you're going to have trouble. That's how, that's how Herter gets his space is by those guys drawing and kicking to him and those guys drawing all of the attention to the middle of the key and then him standing there waiting on the wing uh, for a wide open look. I, I think teams are, are game planning a little bit more for Herter, uh, trying to take him away. But this is a game still where like he should be, he'll have an opportunity. There's, there's an extra, you know, what, 16, 17 shots that Fox usually takes that somebody's got to take. And why not him? You know, of course, Mitchell will take a few more of those, but why not Herter? Why not uh, Why not Keegan Murray? Maybe even Malik Monk. Like, why not have him be a primary guy that, that goes for 30 tonight, you know, that you're you're pushing for that? Um, it's just everyone's got to step up when you lose your, your star. Yeah. Kevin Herter shooting 35% since November 9th. Hmm. Prior Overall to that. Overall or th- from three? From three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. From three. Yeah. Does he shoot other shots besides three? Thirty five percent from three. Prior to November ninth, he was like fifty two percent. Yeah, so, it all I mean, balances out. People are making adjustments to what the Kings are doing. That, that's now. What's your counter? What's that's your a nice. That's, that's a nice. That's that's a nice compliment as opposed to come on, man, it's the Kings. Let's just go kick their ass and go to the club. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, let's just go let's kick go their ass this. and go to Ricky's. Yes. Let's go <laughs> Seventh and J Street downtown Sacramento. Club Rickies. <laughs> it is it forever. It, it'll be there forever. Like I know that I I know that live spiel by heart. Um, it's a miracle I'm still alive, given some of the things that happened out on that corner. Uh, um, Keon Ellis, uh, active with the team. Uh, saw I think a minute and eighteen seconds of him a couple of nights ago. Uh, keep more key on Ellis minutes tonight. I know you mentioned Delhi's probably going to get some run. delhi has been really effective uh, when he's been out there, but are, are the Kings going to use this road trip as an opportunity to, to see what Keon Ellis can do? Or is he just kind of, he's a body. If we, you know, if we're getting blown out, we'll use him. If we really, really need him, we'll use him. You know, Mike Brown has a tendency to do things kind of off script and I could see a situation where if Garland uh, got Davion Mitchell in early foul trouble or if he became like a major problem, that you could try that, especially, you know, Della Vadova at 32 years old, you know, he's not, and coming off of five years worth of injuries, he's not the fleetest of foot. He's not the most uh, laterally quick uh, guy that you're going to put out there and, and think that you can stop a guy like Garland. So if you need him, um, like, look, I think I think Keon Ellis has proven that he can play. Oh my gosh! Hey, I'm back. Oh, <laughs> unofficial. That was that 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 was a pause, not yeah. a freeze. <laughs> yeah, he he's proven that he can play defense and he can knock down a three. And uh, you know, if if he uh, James follows, is the up, only one not amused by this. He absolutely James hates this. It pisses, it pisses him off every time. He just wants to talk Kings and answer the damn question. And we laugh when he freezes. Yeah. I'm sorry, James. It's, it's all about the, the Wi-Fi here. I, I knew it was going to be an issue today. We had an issue watching the, uh, the world cup this morning. It's just like, Oh, come on. So yeah. I'm weather and with on the world cup. I like Keon Ellis. Like I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see him. I don't necessarily, believe they need to experiment like too much here at this point but i do like your idea if for some reason davion gets in trouble or or, or foul trouble or or something along those lines I, I would like to see what he looks like in in a meaningful a meaningful stretch of basketball 
Because yeah. I really liked him. I loved watching him in, 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 in preseason and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the best thing about Keon Ellis is this is exactly who he was in college. You're not asking him to do anything else. You're just asking him to go out there and be who he was. And that means, you know, play defense, shoot the three ball, on occasion make a pass, on occasion get out on a break, but don't don't think you've got to be someone different. And that's not what they're doing at Stockton. And it's not what they're doing, you know, what they're going to do if he gets any minutes here with the Kings. Um, just do exactly what you have become accustomed to as an as a player at the college level. And you'll be just fine. Yeah, I think I think that um, what you talked about with Keon Ellis applies for a lot of people tonight in general. You know, a lot of people on that roster may feel like, hey, I got to step up because, you know, Fox is out and I got to, um, you know, do a little bit more. The only people that I'm really looking at that way are Ma Malik, Herder, and Sabonis. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, you just do you. Just yeah. do you. So Davion Mitchell, do what you do. Even Harrison Barnes. I yeah, we need well, we need a good Harrison night. We need a good one, but it still could just be 15 plus. I don't well, need that's a I good don't... Harrison night, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you know I don't want one of four. No. Is what I'm talking about. If, I, if there's one of four, I'm walking to Cleveland. No, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna go to him. Cut like, this. I'm gonna yeah. be like Harrison. Everybody what's going on? on? I don't think they'll be in Cleveland by the time you get there. I'll be like Harrison, come on, man. I have to walk to New York probably. I, 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 you love that. There, Kenny'd yeah. sign up for those that. Those my people over there, you know. Hey, and I'll tell you this too. This could be one of those weird games where Mike looks over and says, "You know what? Maybe this is a moment where Rashawn Holmes might be able to help us against mm -hmm. a really, really long and athletic team. Maybe he's a guy that we can put on the floor and steal a few minutes and see if he's if he's figuring things out, um, and and kind of go from there. Because this, I mean, this team starts too legit, like six foot eleven seven foot dudes that are really, really difficult. I feel like we've said that a couple of times this year, Hammer. We've and the yet, Kings we've, have... we've, we've yet to see Rashawn Holmes. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean I'm I'm not I'm know. I'm not against the idea. Like Trista asked this earlier. Why is it mentality, defense, three point shooting? Like they just I mean we've presented this. I can't remember what the other team was, but we've talked about this before. Like maybe this is a matchup for Rashawn. It's never a matchup for Rashawn. It's like, this is just a, a guy that Mike Brown seemed. I don't think it's a stretch to seem. He seemed eager or, or, or at least interested in, in having out on the floor. No longer does. Yeah. You know, we always talk about guys who are willing to accept their roles. And I think the way that, Chemezi Metu has just like accepted it. Uh, like, I don't think in in spirit, but like on the court, he fully is embracing who and what they want him to be, and that's all you can ask for. Like again, he's versatile enough to go defend multiple positions on the perimeter. Um, you know, I don't think he's a lockdown defender by any stretch of the imagination, but he's not hoisting threes. He's figuring out how the passing game works and how the screen game works. You know, mm -hmm. this team doesn't even need you to be a great passer because all they do is DHOs, you know, the dribble handoffs. So, mm -hmm. like, if you can just sit there and, and be a quarterback and hand the ball off to a running back, that's what they're asking of you. And that's something that, again, it's not that Holmes can't do that. It's that every single time early in the season when he was on the court, he was a second late to get there. And he just kept getting offensive foul calls either on himself or on his teammate because he's not snapping it and getting into the offense quick enough. He's not getting into the defensive set quick enough. And so it's it's not that I, I think that he's he's being defiant or anything else. He's just not 100% like locked into what's happening. And it, it, when you're playing this fast-paced and you have an offense that's this potent, that's you have to do it especially the sacrifice thing, he's not going to get a bunch of pick and rolls. That's just, it's not the offense. And so figure out a different way to be effective. Hey, um, one kind of side note thing or whatever the case may be, my guy, my guy, Trey Burke, uh, signed with Stockton today. What, you got any idea what that's all about? No. Um, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that they're looking just for a veteran hand to get them through because like they're putting up numbers, but if you want to win a bunch of games at the G league level, 
you got to have a veteran that can lead the way and, and keep everything kind of cool and calm and on going the same direction. And remember last year it was Quinn Cook. They did the same thing. They brought in Quinn. Um, this year, Trey Burke is, you know, he's a guy who's had a lot more experience in the league. Um, but, I, you know, at the G League level, he should be a game changer. He should be really good at the G League level. Um, and, you know, he can help a guy like uh, – like Chimezi Metu, I mean, uh, like Chima Moneki or uh, Namias Keda. He can help those guys continue their growth. And I think that might be what you're trying to do. You might have a guy who you really like, uh, but who's young and doesn't know the ins and outs of the league and how exactly to take your guys to the next level. And, and Trey Burke should be one of those guys that if he just comes in and looks for a shot, then it's a waste of time. If he comes in and looks to make teammates better and really work with young guys, then. Uh, then it's worth whatever money you're spending on him. Michigan legend, Trey Burke. Okay. Uh, what happens tonight? Tonight. Mm. What happens in 40 minutes when this <laughs> game starts? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be almost dark. I, we're almost to that winter solstice, right? Yeah, we're getting uh, close. Yeah, it just keeps getting dark. Oh, it's out there, out there. It is dark. Yeah, my son has soccer practice after school, and you know they start at four, and by the time they're halfway through, it's pitch black, and they got to play under the lights. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, tonight I'm gonna say it's gonna be a close game, just like the last time these two teams played. And uh, you know, I think the Kings have a little bit of an advantage here, um, but they got to go out and show that they want it, and show that they're gonna grab a hold of this six-game uh, road trip and, and make some noise. Kings win. Donovan Mitchell not being there is huge. Kings win tonight. Yeah. I mean, well, I just, just tuning in. De'Aaron Fox is out too. Yeah. Okay. King, I, Kings I, I, are I a think, deeper team. I, 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 I think you're right. I think you're right. I think the Kings have more depth uh, than the Cleveland Cavaliers do. Um, big night from Rashawn. Uh, big night from Demonte Sabonis tonight. Need it. Big night from Malik Monk tonight. Need it. And I want to see Kevin Herter shoot well. Need it. Um. If those Cleveland, are spoilers. That's happening. If I'm Cleveland, I'm trying to take away Sabonis, which means those other guys have got to perform. Hmm. Malik going to take away Sabonis, though. You throw, you shock him. You send a double team at him the whole time. So that's, him. That, but that's what I mean. Back. Like when he touches the ball, like. Yeah. I, I still think he. I mean, I, clog the passing lanes with all that length around Sabonis. Collapse on him with all that length. Go ahead, try that, JB. <laughs> try that. Uh, we appreciate y'all so much for being with us today. We appreciate you so much for being with us uh, this week. Make sure you check out uh, the amazing work that James Ham does over there at thekingsbeat.com. You could subscribe to the Kings Beat podcast on whatever podcast platform you prefer or on the Kings 